pipe shop and in this video we're just going to go through the process of cleaning and gluing a solvent weld joint. Now we're faced with a choice of several different types of glue. Um, we have several different types. We have our standard glue here which is a water thin glue, um, has a brush inside it, uh, it's clear um, and is a uh, nice glue for use for general processes. Um, another make of glue we supply which is a much thicker glue. Um, some people prefer it for some reason to the thinner glue. Um, that's a glue called Tangit. Um, there's another type of glue you can get uh, which is a high chemical resistance glue if you're using any chlorine in your lines. Not, not the level of chlorine which you get uh, dosed into tap water but for example in a water treatment works if there's um, a high concentration of chlorine or other chemicals, um, it's usually best to use a high chemical resistance glue such as HCR or Ditex or something like that. Um, we also get uh, wet or dry glues or dry fast glues, which are usually a blue colour. Um, they can be used, when they say wet or dry, they can be used on uh, pipe out in... Um, maybe foggy, misty weather, the pipe's slightly damp, you can't get it totally dry um, and they'll work well in that situation. They're not going to work underwater when they say wet or dry, uh, they're not going to work underwater and they're not going to work in, uh, in rain um, when it's coming down really heavy and you can't get any sense of dryness on your pipe or fitting at all. Um, but they are useful for that. They, they do dry much faster, uh, reaching full working pressure in a few hours whereas the other glues ideally are left about um, 18 to 24 hours, but that depends on temperature. At a higher temperature, um, the glue will set much quicker. So, first thing we've got to do is prepare our piece of pipe. I've got a piece of two inch BBC here. It's been cut nice and sharp on the end. And what we've got to do is to shave the end down and make a chamfer on the end. Now, the reason for that is when it's going into the socket, is isn't so that it slides into the socket nicely, although it does help with that. It's so that it doesn't push all the glue in front of it. Because if we leave a sharp cut edge, we push it into our socket, there's a risk it's going to act like a knife edge and push all the glue ahead of it, and none of the glue is going to get around and into the joint itself. So the angle of chamfer we want is sort of between 22 and 45 degrees, that kind of angle. There are various ways to um, get the chamfer on. Uh, if we're in a workshop situation and you have a grinder wheel, that's a real nice easy way of getting the chamfer on the pipe. Out from the field, it's not so easy. Um, you can use a file, just a file around. It doesn't need to be a huge, huge chamfer on it, going right from the inside of the pipe to the outside. It just needs to take the edge off. Another option is to use a paint scraper um, and to scrape around the side of the pipe, like so. Paint scrapers are great for pipes of about an inch and a half or 50 millimetres or higher. Anything smaller than that and they can be a real pain. But they're great for larger sizes of pipe as well because uh, you don't want to spend half your day with a 160 or 200 millimetre pipe going around it with a little file. You can also use a flapper disc on a grinder. The um, Inox discs are best for it. That's the ones with sort of several layers of um, sandpaper type material around it, and you can give it a nice, uh, a nice chamfer. Again, especially on the larger pipes, they chamfer those really quick with a grinder with an Inox flapper wheel on it. Um, so once we've chamfered our pipe, I'm going to chamfer it all round now. Let's finish this off. I'm going to get rid of any bits of swarf which are around the pipe at all. Um, we want to be wearing gloves, uh, not PVC gloves. If we wear PVC gloves, the moment any cleaner or any glue gets on our gloves, it's going to start melting our gloves because the cleaner and glue is designed to melt the two plastics, the outside of the pipe and the inside of the socket together to form the seal and to form the joint. Okay, that's how the, that's how the solvent weld 
joints work. They don't work in ways that normal glue works, but they work by melting the two surfaces together. So that's the end of our pipe is now chamfered, um, so it's not going to push all the glue ahead of it. What we need to do now is clean it. This is a nice new bit of pipe. If you're using a piece of pipe which has been taken off a system, it's quite an old bit of pipe. The outside of it will be fairly badly oxidized. It might look okay, but it can be fairly badly oxidized. And with old pipe, it's often best using a little bit of emery paper just to, just to rub around it. Once you've used your emery paper, get a bit of cloth. And we're gonna use our cleaner on here, which is a solvent well cleaner, onto our cloth. Some cleaner comes with brushes and you can paint it on and then wipe it, paint it on the pipe and wipe it off with cloth. And we're just going to wipe around, making sure we get off any nasties which are on the pipe. We're also then going to turn our cloth and we're going to clean the inside of our fitting we're going to clean both sides of the inside of our fitting because it's very easy if you just clean one side you put it down and then you forget which side you cleaned okay now we always glue our fitting first our socket first the reason for this is straightforward we can put the glue in the socket then we can put the socket down then we can pick the pipe up glue the pipe pick our socket up and glue it onto the pipe if we glued our pipe first we've then got a load of wet glue on the outside of our pipe and we can't really put it down anywhere because it's going to stick to things, it's going to pick up dust and everything like that. So we always glue the inside of our socket first. So. Use our glue, we want a nice generous wipe around the inside of the socket, making sure we cover the whole socket, go around it in a circular motion, then we can put our socket down, then we can put glue around the outside of our pipe, making sure in particular that we've covered the end and the chamfer of the pipe. We then get our socket and our pipe and we simply push them together and we hold them in place. Hold them for a few seconds. The glue is pretty fast setting. It melts the, melts the plastic fairly quickly. With small fittings, you can usually let them go quite quickly. Larger fittings, there can be some pressure in the actual joint itself where the glue has been forced into the joint and if you let it go too quickly the fitting can slide apart. There's a landing on the inside of the fitting and the pipe goes nicely right up to the landing and you feel a nice stop. It's often a good idea to measure the depth of the socket inside to the landing and to measure your pipe after you've cleaned it and put a small mark with either a china graph pen or a permanent marker just on the pipe just to give you an idea that you have gone all the way in, especially if you're new at doing this. So that's our fitting now glued. If we want, we can wipe around the top and make it look a bit neat. Remember though, when we're putting pipe work together like this, we're trying to make it functional rather than trying to make it pretty. Okay, so um, the rule is put plenty of glue on. If a bit runs down and it looks a bit of a mess, okay, it looks a bit of a mess, but it's still gonna be sealed. If you try and make it look too pretty, and try and put just a minimum amount of glue on, you're going to run into a risk of, um, of the joint leaking. Now, importantly, you may have seen when I pushed the socket onto the pipe, I pushed it straight on. I didn't twist it, I didn't turn it. If we twist it or turn it as we put it on, what that does is it starts to shear the glue and shear the cement, and we end up with striations inside which uh, can cause leakage. <clears throat> if it's critical on the angle which your fitting goes on, it's often a good idea to mark the fitting and the angle first of all, okay, and then you can push it on in that direction with maybe just a slight turn. Once the fitting is on completely, it's okay to give it a slight turn because then any striations are just going around the actual socket. If we do it as we put it on, we're going to cause tracks running along the socket itself. Okay. If you are putting them together dry first, don't clean them. Okay. If you clean them and then try and put them together dry, there'll be residual amounts of cleaner on the pipe and on the fitting and it'll start to bind together and you may struggle to get it apart again. 
So if you are assembling them dry, make sure you do it before you put any cleaner anywhere near them, okay? Just give them a wipe around with a dry cloth and assemble them. You sometimes need to knock them out with a little uh, with a plastic mallet or something, or a wooden mallet, just to get them apart. But it enables you to assemble something and see how it's going to look, and also maybe mark things up. One last point, if we're gluing something like a valve, ideally what we want to do is to take the union end off the valve. I'll turn the light round. This end hasn't been cleaned, so I can push it in, okay? We want to uh, make sure that our union nut, if there is one, is on in the right place, because if we leave that off, there's no way we're going to get that on afterwards, okay? And we glue this whilst it's off the valve. If that can't be avoided, and the end has to the daisy, and the end has to stay on the valve, it's important that we glue the valve in effect upside down. So once we put the glue on the valve, we put our valve down that way. So we're gluing this part. We put put our valve down. We paint the glue onto our pipe, and we glue the valve down this direction. If we glue it and assemble it in this direction, what's going to happen is it's going to push glue, some glue, past the end of the landing and that's going to drip into our valve. And if that then sets, our valve is going to be glued solid and we're not going to be able to use it at all. It's not going to rotate at all. For good practice, even when I'm gluing it up this way, I always make sure once it's been glued, I wait a, cut, I wait a second and give the valve a turn and just make sure if somehow anything has got in there, it's still turning okay. Okay, if you've got any questions about it at all, feel free to email us or ring us in the office, um, or there's more information and more videos on our website, www.plasticpipeshop.co.uk. Thanks for watching. Bye.